Hello everyone and welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. This is the Private Pilot Ground School. My name is Mike Thompson. Now, to be successful in this course, there are three key parts. Number one, please study this content and the related supporting documents in Epic's online course. Number two, view these videos in parallel to that content. And number three, you'll find this to be critical. You are going to want to review all of this content with your flight instructor. Now, what's our topic today? Our topic today is the National Transportation Safety Board. The FAA feels that it is very important for pilots to understand some of these NTSB requirements. Now, tell me if you've ever seen this before. You've seen 14 CFR. It says 14 CFR, and then it might say part 91 or part 61. Did you ever wonder what that 14 CFR meant? The CFR stands for the Code of Federal Regulations, and 14 means Title 14 of that code. Well, we see 14 CFR a lot because guess where the FAA falls? It falls into 14 CFR. Why do I mention that? Because the NTSB falls into 49 CFR. In other words, in the Code of Federal Regulations, the NTSB falls under Title 49. So, I'm going to do something I've never done before. We're going to change this up a little bit, and we're going to take just a couple of minutes and read some of this NTSB together. All right? So, let's grab our book, and <clears throat> once upon a time, in a dark, dark forest, there lived, uh, wait a minute, I don't think that's the NTSB I was looking for. Um, ah, here's a good book, Telling is Not Teaching by Mike Thompson, hmm, Amazon.com. That's not the book we were looking for. Oh, here it is. You probably are all, all are familiar with the FAR AIM. Now, we open up the FAR AIM to Part 830, and you'll notice it says 49 CFR Part 830. Now, let's take a look at this together. I just want to hit a few critical highlights in subpart A under definitions an aircraft accident. An aircraft accident means an occurrence associated with the operation of the aircraft, and I'm going to skip ahead a little bit in which any person suffers death or serious injury or in which the aircraft receives substantial damage. Now, <clears throat> these definitions are important for us as we proceed. Uh, what's the difference between accident and an incident? An incident is anything other than an accident that could affect the safety of operations. So subpart A with definitions is critical. Those two definitions will come back to us in just a moment. So while we're on definitions, what do we mean by serious injury? Serious injury means any injury which requires hospitalization for more than 48 hours, results in a fracture, causes severe hemorrhage, involves an internal organ, second or third degree burns over more than 5% of the body. I know this is kind of, kind of morbid stuff, but we need to be clear on the definitions in order to help us understand NTSB 830. Well, what's the definition of substantial damage? Substantial damage means damage or failure which adversely affects the structural strength of your aircraft, its performance, or its flight characteristics. Now, these definitions are critical. Let's jump ahead now to subpart B, and it talks about notification of the NTSB. When must I notify them? It says that you shall immediately notify them by the most expeditious means available when 
there is an aircraft accident. Well, what's an aircraft accident? See why these definitions are important? We just looked at the definition. So, an aircraft accident or if you experience a flight control system malfunction, if any of the flight crew members become incapacitated or unable to do their job, or if we have an in-flight fire, or if we have an aircraft collision, or damage to property other than the aircraft estimated to exceed $25,000, or a release or any portion of the, a, a separation of the propeller or any portion of the propeller. In other words, the propeller left the aircraft. A complete loss of information for more than 50% of the cockpit displays. Or if we land on or depart on a taxiway, incorrect runway, or other area not designated as a runway, or we experience a runway incursion. Okay, all of these things require the immediate notification of the NTSB. That's subpart B. Let's look a little bit into subpart C. Subpart C talks about preservation of wreckage. So why would that be important? Hmm, think about yourself as an accident investigator. Do you see how it's critical if you're trying to investigate that accident and find out what happened to see the parts and pieces of that aircraft where they came to rest after this accident or incident. So the preservation of this wreckage helps the NTSB help us by getting to the, the root cause of this accident. So it tells us the operator of the aircraft involved in an accident or an incident. What's an accident or an incident? Aha, we go back to our earlier definitions. Is responsible for preserving to the extent possible aircraft wreckage. Now, notice if we read a little bit further, we are of course allowed to move wreckage if we need to re remove injured persons or transport them or protect the wreckage from further damage or protect the general public from injury. Then finally we get to subpart D <clears throat> and this talks about reporting of accidents and incidents or overdue aircraft. Now it said the reports to the NTSB must be made within 10 days after an accident or within seven days if the aircraft is overdue. Well folks, I know that's not our normal routine but this is a critical information and my goal here was just to highlight those key pieces in the actual regulation itself. And of course, be sure to review all of this with your flight instructor. Well, that just about wraps it up for our review of the NTSB requirements. We'll see you next time.